Hello, everybody. Welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I am your host, Tom Burrett, and this is episode 52. Today's axiom, uh, applying excerpts, sort of came out of an experience I had this weekend. I was playing with the uh, Austin Symphony as part of Ballet Austin's uh, sort of opening um, opening ballet in their series this, uh, this year. Uh, we did uh, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake in the first half, and uh, or portions of it, and uh, the entire uh, full-length Stravinsky Firebird Ballet Suite. And so... Um, yeah, I think I you know I learned a lot from that this weekend, and I wanted to share a few things with you guys uh, as, as today's axiom. Um, before we do that, and get back into just one quick announcement. I've been doing a lot of work on thomasburrett.com. Uh, takes a lot of time to do that. And uh, just invite you guys to go check it out. I'm going to keep adding some things, especially some free content. haven't gotten to that part totally yet, but hopefully within the next week or two, depending on when I get some time to do it, uh, there's going to be some interesting things, I think, up there. So go check that out. Um, so let's move on with uh, some listener comments. Um, thank you so much. We're getting some better comments now and some more comments. It's great. I love that. It keeps me moving. Um, so we have a, a, a lot of new people also leaving comments. So big ups to you lurkers out there that are coming out. Uh, and this one's from Lee Lin Chow, who says, Great episode with great breakdown of your approach to narrow interval rotations. Um, thanks. But what about double verticals? I'm working on Neighbor Saul's Murmur Concerto now, and the left-hand double vertical in the fourth minute is killing, especially with Steven's grip. The fact is I just went ahead and learned it, the concerto with Burton grip, because of the fourth movement. I'm a chop, I'm ch I am chop busting like crazy, but I always feel like I'm too tight and tense, which distracts from the music. Well, that last part is definitely true. When you're tense and too tight, definitely distracts from the music. Uh, and I know which exactly which... Um, Thing you're talking about, Lynn, uh, Lee Lynn, and I and I got back to you on that video. I'm, I'm finding this flip cam with questions like this to be way more useful to just leave a quick video explanation rather than writing out all kinds of stuff. Um, and I know you got that, so that's great. Um, and if you want to see that, I'll try to leave that in the um, in the show notes. So if you're curious about the answer to that question, because I can't go into all of it right now. Um, but uh, so Lee Lynn, I hope you found that helpful, and thank you so much for uh, leaving comments. Um, yeah, I can't go into the answer right now because we'll go over time, but. If you're interested in that, check it out. So she also answered the question of the episode, uh, what gets me excited? And uh, she says, simple, playing my instruments, drum set, marimba vibes, Tim's congas, so many things to practice, so little time. Well, that's exactly right, Lynn. It's a great perspective to have. I try to have that too. If you don't want to ever burn out in your professional life or your student life, keep that kind of enthusiasm and um, you'll be set. That's exactly right. So thank you again, Lee Lynn, and um, keep watching and tell your friends. All right, today's episode, uh, applying excerpts. So, you know, many of us learn a lot of very important excerpts. Metronome, we learn all the details, all the little tricks. Obviously, those things are important. Um, but we don't get often is a chance to really play those excerpts live. And so we're going to really focus on that part today. Um, unfortunately, it's, uh, you know, it's difficult to get those experiences, but I just wanted to share a few things that I that I learned this weekend about that. Um, so before we get into that real quick, just a little bit of history on the Firebird Suite. Um, there's many versions of this piece, actually. The original 1910 Ballet Suite has all of the xylophone stuff, and it's pretty long. It's about 50 minutes. Um, but it's, you know, the concert versions of 1911, 1919, 1945 um, don't have all the xylophone stuff. So the real long um, excerpt that you had listened to at the beginning of the show, by the way, if you don't know the excerpt, um, I didn't miss any, I didn't miss the last note. There you go. You know, I, I hit every right note except the last note. That's the way it goes sometimes, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> so what you just heard at the beginning of the show um, was actually the original 1910 version. But most of you will probably have more of an opportunity to play the other versions, which actually don't have this long xylophone lick in it. It's got a couple of the other spots. But anyway, Stravinsky, by the way, uh, who's one of my favorite composers, um, it was sort of his first big hit, his collaboration with Diaghilev, and led to many more, including the Rite of Spring, which, of course, is probably one of the greatest or great orchestral pieces of the 20th century. Um, so it's just absolutely incredible music. And, of course, there are so many versions for orchestra because the music is so great. And that's why there are so many other versions. So just a little history there and background. Uh, so let's talk about the axiom. Um, so, you know, we spend all this time learning excerpts and then, you know, we get into a real situation and everything changes, right? Uh, an orchestra's time is typically, well, never perfect. <laughs> so if we met everything, get everything nailed as far as that goes, 
um, we're in for a big problem. This is true in a lot of um, a lot of xylophone excerpts, like Porgy and Bess is, is the best example, right? We can play that really fast, but chances are the strings will never play it as fast as you can play it. So at that point, then, it becomes very important to use your ears and to listen. Um, so we'll get to the ear thing. One other thing, real quick, is you, you really need to take on, when you're in a live situation with an excerpt like that, you really need to take on the um, quality of the music or the style of the music. And you can even tell from the way I played the excerpt at the beginning of the show that it's you know it's pretty buoyant, pretty quick, very pretty light, not too heavy. It doesn't get heavy towards the end until the end of the excerpt. If you take on that percent personality, that style, it's going to really help. It actually, I think for me, helps me hit more right notes actually when I really just start thinking about the general effect and style of the music. The second thing is know the scoring. Okay, the best way to play with musicians is to just listen play with them. I did not one time in the f four times that I played that this weekend did I look up at the conductor. Actually one time. <laughs> the first the first performance the orchestra basically almost fell apart and because I was listening entirely to put all my notes in the right place I had to literally watch. It was my only option because things were so spread apart. Luckily it didn't happen every night but the rest of the time I was just listening and that's exactly how I knew exactly where to put the notes. So in order to do that you have to know what's going on. So there's a big English horn cue that you have to know going in there are woodwind 16ths at 127, if you're reading the, um, the excerpt book out of uh, the Raynor Carroll book. Um, and then s several bars later, there's offbeat strings at 129. There are offbeat low strings. And there's bra brass quarter notes at 131, uh, brass quarter notes at 131, and, and fifth bar of 13 all the way to the end. So all the way through the excerpt, I'm thinking, if I'm not playing it with them, I'm thinking about who I'm listening to. And when I am playing it with them, I'm, I'm listening entirely to them, making sure that I'm right with them. Now, you'll notice, I want you to compare the first example that I showed you at the beginning of the show to the last one, and you'll see a huge difference. So the last excerpt that, you, that you'll hear after, this, after I finish talking here is actually from the dress rehearsal, live right from the run-through. Uh, so you can see the, the excerpt in motion with the instruments and everything. So the mic's a little hot. It's not the best audio, but at least gives you an idea. So compare those two. You'll notice the second one's very, very much 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 slower and um, nowhere near as metronomic because I'm constantly adjusting so that's it so that's what I learned this weekend it's about using your ears when you're applying excerpts that you've learned um, two things get in the musical style to me that helps me make more of the right notes hit, hit more of the right notes and then also really know the scoring know who you're playing with and that's how you make your decisions I don't even watch the conductor in that case so I know that may sound crazy but I found it to be really helpful and I hope you do too um, question of the episode uh, is this. What's your favorite xylophone excerpt? Some of us think the xylophone in general is underrated, um, but um, we'd love to know what your favorite xylophone excerpt is and then maybe a story or maybe some ideas on what you find helpful when you're actually playing it, an excerpt that you worked so hard on live. That's it. Thank you so much, you guys, and uh, thank you always for watching, and we'll see you next time.